Hi, this is Chris from Your Network Expert. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install an operating system for use with Raspberry Pi. I'm going to use the Raspbian Lite OS, but these steps could be used for any other OS that's used with the Raspberry Pi. What you're going to need for this is a micro SD card. I like using the 32 gig or above because it will give plenty of room for whatever type of operating system you're going to use. But the one thing you do have to ensure is that you do have sufficient space on the micro SD card based upon the operating system that you are going to use. The first thing that we're going to do is we need to install the Raspberry Pi imager. Now there's other imagers that are out there and I prefer the Raspberry Pi imager. And so to get that, we all we have to do is go to raspberrypi.org. Once we're there, we select software, and then we just slightly scroll down until you see the install Raspberry Pi OS using the Raspberry Pi imager, and then click on download for Windows. But there's also versions there for Mac and as well as Ubuntu as well. I've already gone ahead and done this. And so now I'm going to bring up the imager itself. And it's a really simple to use interface uh, on this. The first thing we need to do is we need to choose the actual operating system that we're going to flash the micro SD card on. So we just click on that and what will happen is it will come up and it will actually show you various different operating systems that you can put on. By default, it will always go to the Raspberry Pi OS port for Debian for the Raspberry Pi desktop and it says it's recommended. So this particular one is the bare bones Raspberry Pi operating system with a really lightweight graphical user interface. There are others out there that we can already pre-package, or if you want to even use, you can even do a custom as well too. But what we're going to do for this is we're just going to click on Raspberry Pi Operating Systems Other. And today I'm just going to use the lightweight Raspberry Pi OS Lite. This is just the bare bones operating system. It does not have a desktop or a graphical user interface on it. And it's really great if you're going to be doing uh, applications such as a lightweight server or a headless operation for your Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select that. And so I'm going to confirm that it is the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to tell the imager where are we going to put this image. And this is a very extremely important step. So I'm going to click on choose storage. I've got a 32 gig uh, micro SD card in my laptop. Now, one thing you have to ensure is that you want to make sure that you don't have external hard drives, other thumb drives with important information on it. Uh, if you do select the wrong ones, the Raspberry Pi imager will overwrite those particular storages. And we don't want that. We want to make sure that it's going to where we want it to go. So I do make sure that I don't have my external hard drive plugged in or other thumb drives that could be overwritten. So yeah, I know I've confirmed that it is this particular one. So I'm going to click on that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to simply click on write. Now, this is going to take some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video and then I'll come back when it is done uh, to continue on with the actual installation itself. Okay, now that the operating system write was successful, it's going to pop up and it's going to ask, okay, do you wish to continue? Uh, you can now remove the SD card from the actual reader. So I'm just going to click on continue. And now I am going to remove the SD card and I'm going to put it into my target Raspberry Pi. So I will stop the video and then I'm going to pop it up and show you um, some other further configurations that we're going to do before we can have this up and running. So now what I did was I've taken the micro SD card out of my laptop and I put it into Raspberry Pi. And now I'm going to boot the Raspberry Pi up to boot up the operating system that we installed. So I want to go through the whole process with you uh, by just showing the screenshots of that particular process so you know how, what looks normal and what doesn't look normal. Okay, 
So now we've got a prompt, which means that the operating system, which is in this case, the Raspbian OS Lite is operating. So now what I'm going to do is I mentioned earlier that I'm going to do some configurations so that we can get this up and running. Now, these configurations should be done regardless if you're using a command line interface such as what we're seeing right now, or if you're actually using like a graphical user interface, which uh, an example of that would be the Raspbian desktop. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to log in. So the username that we use, and it is a default username, is pi, as in P-I, and the password is raspberry. Okay, now we're logged in. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into super user mode uh, because there's going to be some things that we're going to do that requires us to be in that particular mode. So to do that, I'm just going to type in sudo su and hit enter. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the Raspberry Pi config. So to do that, it's just rasp i or raspy if you want to call it dash config. And so in here, the first thing that we want to do is we want to go and take a look at the interface options. The first thing I like to do is I'd like to install SSH or Secure Shell. And so what this will allow me to do is if I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi as a headless device, that I could just log into it using an SSH client that's built into many operating systems or even applications that allow this to happen. So I'm just gonna go and scroll down until I highlight SSH. I'm gonna hit enter. And then it's gonna ask me if I'd like to have it enabled or not. And I'm just gonna tab over until I highlight yes. And I'm gonna hit enter. And then now the SSH server is enabled. So I'm gonna click on okay. It's gonna bring me back out to the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the localization options. I'm gonna set the actual time zone itself for the Raspberry Pi so that it will act, the system will actually have the actual time zone that I actually reside in. I live in Canada, so it's listed under America. So we're gonna just select America. And I lived in the time zone that is representative of Edmonton. So I just hit E and then highlighted there is Edmonton. So I just hit enter. And now my time zone is set for the time zone that I'm in. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to advanced options. The first selection that we do have is expand the file system. So what happens when the operating systems are installed onto the, the micro SD card is it'll only do a certain portion of the, the card um, in the, and it'll create the partition for that particular size, just enough for the actual operating system. So, but what we wanna do is we wanna expand that out so that we can actually use the whole amount of the micro SD card. All we have to do is just highlight the A1, which is the expand file system, and we're gonna hit enter. And now it says the root partition has been resized. The file system will be enlarged upon the next reboot. So we're going to click on OK. And then we're going to tab over until we see finish. It says, we, would you like to reboot now? And so what I'm also going to do now is I'm going to say no for now, because the next thing I'd like to do, and I'm just going to clear the screen, is I wanted to do an update. Sometimes when you do get the operating system off of... Um, and it doesn't matter what type of operating system you get, you wanna do an update uh, because sometimes the ones that are posted up are might be a little bit behind. So to do that, it is just the use of the command. So what I wanna do is I wanna type in apt update to and signs and apt upgrade with a dash Y. So I hit enter. And what it's gonna do is gonna go out there and download if there's any updates or not. And in this case, there's actually none. So we're ready to go with this installation of an operating system onto the Raspberry Pi. In this video, I taught you how to install an operating system onto a Raspberry Pi. So in the case here, we used the Raspbian Lite OS, which is a non-graphical user interface type operating system. So you can use these, uh, what I've taught you with various different operating systems that are used on the Raspberry Pi. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. I hope the information helps you out. If you have any comments, please uh, make some comments below. If you do really like the video, give it a thumbs up. And we are gonna be doing a lot of work with regards to the Raspberry Pi over the next little bit. So make sure that you click on the subscribe button as well as the notification button, which is the bell, uh, to get notifications when the next videos are coming out. Thank you for joining me today. Take care and we'll see you soon.